chap, a banana tree. And we have also bought these absolutely gorgeous peach trees. They are absolutely stunning. And we were so excited to just look at this. We've got some blossom on our lemon trees. And we we bought them from Leroy's at Christmas time. Look at this fig just coming into leaf. So beautiful. <laughs> Abby's getting ready for another bonfire this evening. And it has been a balmy 26 degrees here today. Look at this area here that Abe's cleared. Absolutely fantastic. So this is the furthest area from the farm and we were down here the other evening and we've realised look. Now if anybody lives in the Algarve People will know what this is a sign of. Just look at this. I'm really excited because this is all being dug up and this is a sign of wild boar. So it's your wild javelin, your little pigs that have come in here and they um, dig up slugs, etc. And uh, yeah, they've come down here. This is the area that we were going to actually put the tent. <laughs> so uh, it'll make, the, make some interesting evenings, I'm sure. Yeah, you can tell that they've been digging up in uh, areas all around this olive tree so yeah they they've definitely been in here Abe you actually saw one didn't you last night yeah. 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 sort of late on you were having um, a little bonfire and yeah it was only a small one so you can tell why they've been nuzzling the ground yeah all the way across this area yeah So Ev's still on with his pruning. Big job, so a lot to do. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have the wild boar here, but they um, they can be very aggressive if you're uh, out and they've got young. That's the only trouble with wild boar. I think they like the fact that I've cut the, uh, the grass down. Now, you see this? That is orange blossom. And oh my goodness, if I could just tell you what it smells like here in the Algarve where we live. All you can smell when you come out of the house is orange blossom. And it is absolutely gorgeous. It's just in the air. It's absolutely beautiful. Last night, I actually lit the bonfire and lit himself as well that's a very silly thing to do So 
Yeah, what happens if you don't light too fast, you go too close to the fire. Right, come on, show them your, your uh, war wound. That's what happens when you go a bit too close to the fire. Oh, nasty. Yeah, it's not too bad. Done worse. Well, I'd like to say it was lunchtime, but it's 10.30 and we're having a toasty and a sagres. Mm. I got up early this morning to water the plants. And I woke up even earlier. Angela woke up at 3.30 and I explained to Angela, <coughs> since you woke up at 3.30 and she couldn't go back to sleep, why didn't she water the plants? Angela? What do you say about that then? It was actually 4.30 and we're supposed to be getting up earlier. Um, so why didn't you water the plants? <laughs> I did do it yesterday morning and yesterday evening. So I did do it. She did. She did, bless her. And I'm having my arm reset today in a different position. So I'm not really looking forward to that. So how are we going to reset your arm? <laughs> Sagres position actually. Yeah, okay. So you've joined us now and we're just gonna pan round to Abe's arm. You're gonna have to turn it round a bit further. Gosh, that looks really sore. Yeah. Plenty of cervasia, dulls the pain and the itch. Not a, it looks worse than what it actually is. What do you think? She's a bit of a fair weather friend because she, she comes when you have a toasting. Shall we get another toasting a beer? Well, if you want to, Andrew. Well, what do you think? Yeah, well, I've only got a bit of storm walling to do today. And I'm going to go down to see the borehole company, see if I can get physically down there because nobody's come back to us. This is the first time we've been in a traffic jam for a long time, Ebs. Yes, yes. And uh, we're just, um, we're having to go to Lisbon to sort out some things. And uh, this is a queue to cross over the massive bridge into Lisbon. Lisbon. have got to Thursday and time is flying by at the moment. Um, Tuesday I had my arm reset straight and uh, yes it did hurt actually but it didn't hurt the pocket um, with my EDP insurance which we don't get paid for. Um, to, ha to see the consultant for him to take the pot off and repot me it was only 60 euros so that was good it didn't hurt the pocket and yesterday we had to do a flying visit up to lisbon um abe's father died um at christmas as you know and we had to go to the consulate but they don't deal with cyprus so that was a wasted effort going all the way up there and uh, i can tell you i was just no disrespect to Lisbon or people that live in Lisbon. I'm just not a city person. I could not wait to, to leave. Just to be there and to get stuck in all that traffic. It's not the place for me. Um, I must admit we, we didn't really look around Lisbon. And maybe one day we'll, we will go and appreciate it. But I was just so glad to get back on the road back to the Algarve. I can tell you. And um, Abe's busy with his wall this morning. Um, he's around here somewhere. Let me see. Hi, darling. Morning, yeah, morning. cracking on this morning, babe. Um, I'm just, um, I'm coming back to this a bit now. I only can work at it at certain times of the day now because it gets too hot in the day. Yeah, we, it's been um, 25 degrees, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, Most of the time. Warm. Oops, a daisy. That missed both of my plants. <laughs> We've planted the beans down there and they're doing really good. Um, they're partially in the shade. They're doing really well, the beans. Yeah, they're doing really well. Um, I'll show you into the polytunnel as well. We are 
fully um, bedded up at the moment, which is brilliant. Um, some of these are going to be going outside. The shading is working excellently. Um, I'm really glad that Abe's done that. Um, our cucumbers have started to appear. Um, I just actually um, potted those straight into the bed and these fab fava beans will be going out as soon as we get the tractor up and running and got courgettes and okras in there onions aren't looking too great for some reason maybe we have to plant them direct i'm not sure um tomatoes are doing beautifully really pleased with the tomatoes and yeah everything's looking fab look at this not sure what these are no the peppers Chili peppers and lettuce I'm struggling with at the moment. The rocket's coming on. Um, yeah, so chili peppers and lettuce. I'm going to be weeding this area where my carrots are. I can s clearly see which carrots and which are weeds now. And today is one of those days. It just makes you glad to be alive. It really does. Just waking up to sunshine. Um, Sorry for those that are uh, having to put up with the, the rain and the miserable weather probably in the UK. But um, look at the fig tree. It's doing just beautiful. Um, now I've got to give you an update on Charlotte. Um, Charlotte has been rehomed um, by a lovely family in the Alentejo and she went up on Saturday to go to live in her forever home, which is super good news for her. They could give her more than what we could have given her, but um, she's not on the streets anymore and she's not begging for food. So she's gone to um, a cat sanctuary, which hopefully she will absolutely love. And uh, yeah, um, huge thank you to Nikki Doreen and SOS Algarve who um, sterilised her as well. Without these people, um, you wouldn't believe the amount of animals that would be on the streets. And um, they work constantly. I mean, I just did the tiniest bit, but it's these people that really do make a difference because they're continuously um, helping strays and rehoming them. So, um, huge thank you to these, to Nikki Doreen and uh, Jeannie at SOS. And uh, yeah, everything's looking absolutely fantastic at the moment. And I was busy taking a wall down, which he needs to rebuild next to the neighbours. Um, chicken. Bella now has a bed ram. Um, we haven't made the bed because she's still asleep in it. And uh, her jumping up off, on and off the bed. Have you woken up, Belle? I think we need to back you today. Um, Bella jumping on and off the bed at her age is uh, not been good. So she has now got a bed ramp. I've got bed hair then. Don't care, Mummy, I'm going back to sleep. Well, Abe's got a quote from a borehole company. Um, our borehole's 90 metres deep. Um, and we are so lucky to where we live. If anybody knows anywhere that has oranges, orange groves, you do actually have a lot of water. So we actually live in an area which has an awful lot of water although our borehole hasn't been used for many many years um i'm just taking in it is so warm today um so he's got a quote for six thousand six hundred and that's to change the borehole pump and all the irrigation system and for it to go to the big tank which is what roughly we thought it would be 
so um yeah he's gone down there and it will just be nice to have our own water supply and not to worry about how much we are using because we do intend to use a lot of water plus we want an over over above ground swimming pool as well um and it obviously in the algarve you know water is short it, we do have a water shortage here but if you are actually getting it from your own water supply which is a reservoir from underground which this is what our house is actually sat on an underground reservoir um i i wouldn't feel so bad then you know to use the water because it is our own water supply and watering the plants it'll be going back into our own water supply anyway so yeah that's the plan and then the next plan is to get the solar and uh, we would be totally off grid by then um so that's the idea and it, it's really quite exciting um a lot of you will know we are actually at the back of um, a little orange packing factory and in December, November, December, it is actually operational five days a week because we are sort of coming out of orange production um, season now. There's not as many oranges about. Um, it's a lot quieter and to be fair i know a lot of people would say oh that would put me off actually living there because you do get some noise you do get some noises from the fridges going off and you do the noise that we have is from the conveyor belt um but we're not next to a road um but at this time of year we're so lucky that um it's now not operational as often as it is during um, December time when it's peak orange season and also in summer so it's just nice to have these times that it, it's not as noisy um, not that it's a, a really loud noise it's not but it's just nice not to have it here but and I'm not getting paid for this but I thought I would share with you um, I absolutely love nature I love the plants and I love the birds and the insects, not spiders though, and um, the bees and all this kind of thing that's going on. And um, I've often wondered um, what is the sound of that bird? What's the sound of this bird? Obviously you've moved to a new country and you're not sure of the sounds. And um, somebody said, try the Merlin bird app and oh my God, I just love it. I love sitting here. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna sit here and I'm gonna put the bird app on and we'll see how many birds it actually records. Yeah, we're doing a bit of work this morning on the, on the wall, on the wall. And um, I had to leave to sort out the um, ball pump, which we're gonna put in hopefully next week. We're gonna have the ball pump put in next week. Now it's costing six thousand seven hundred to have it totally redone. It's not. It's seven thousand with that extra bit. Yeah. No, yeah, so I haven't mentioned that yet. So it was going to cost six thousand seven hundred for the ball pump. That's all the electrics, the pipe work, feeding to the halo tank, and another three hundred and seventy-five for the um, uh, the mini pump to go up where the uh, cisterna is to feed the water and the plants then then all we do then is we connect the pipe work to the land for the irrigation across um, which is very cheap which I can do it myself but the actual pump itself to electrics I'm leaving with the specialist to do this so it's been a good day so under that stress we've oh you're a gentleman thank you very much we've actually come out for a curry and we've actually got to uh, the Bollywood Indian cuisine in Amasau de Pera, Again. which is our favourite local and, Indian. And we, we had to come here because we had to pick up another boiler which we had supposed to have repaired about four months ago. But it was getting the parts, parts for it was very difficult to get. So, um, once we've sorted out the bar pump, 
Yeah. Um, the next is solar, isn't it? Yeah, the next yeah. is going to get the solar, and the solar will have to output at least nine kilowatt for the for the ball pump. Yeah. Um, but we're going to have it on two different separate systems. So if we, if if we can't drive it, uh, but we're going to probably do the solar system ourselves. And because then we'll be upgrade, won't we? Yeah, because I think it'd be cheaper to buy second hand panels, link them all together and position them where they need to be positioned once the roof's on place. Yeah. Keep our fingers crossed. I would like to put the solar on the roof, or more of them on the roof. But not with the tiles we've got. No, no, but we can't do it with the tiles we've got. We'd have to use new tiles, which we don't really want to do that. So I might have to make a makeshift system. And uh, maybe a carport. To put the... I think a carport would be a better yeah. idea. Yeah, uh, so I'll probably make a carport for the tile for the solar to sit on. Yeah. And uh, that way it'll be multi-use. Multi it'll keep the car cool. At the same time, we can park vehicles underneath it. And also, probably put plants underneath it if we can. Is it hot? Yeah. Come on then. I can carry you over. No, it's alright. 